You've probably seen the clips. Skyscrapers rising almost overnight, new railways stretching across entire provinces, or hospitals built in just days. It looks unreal. But it's not magic. There are real reasons behind it, and today we're breaking those reasons down in a simple, honest, and easy-to-follow way to understand why other countries don't have the same speed between planning and building. First, yes, China really does build at a pace that shocks most countries. Their high-speed rail network exploded across the country in barely over a decade. Cities that didn't even exist 20 years ago now have skylines full of high-rises. Highways? Airports? The scale and speed are unmatched. One of the clearest demonstrations of China's rapid construction ability is found in its bridges, sometimes built not only to cross rivers or canyons, but to completely transform how people move through remote regions. A perfect example is the Huajiang Grand Canyon Bridge in Guizhou Province, the world's highest bridge. This stunning structure rises about 625 meters above the canyon floor and stretches nearly 2,890 meters across rugged, mountainous terrain. What truly amazes people is that a bridge of this scale, the kind of mega-project that usually takes 5 to 10 years elsewhere, was completed in just over 3 years. Because of it, a route that once took around 2 hours can now be crossed in roughly 2 minutes. Another powerful example of China's construction speed is the Defok Bridge, also located in Guizhou. Built across extremely challenging mountain terrain, this bridge was completed in just over two years, a notably short period relative to its complexity. Workers had to carve access roads into steep slopes, assemble massive steel components in difficult conditions, and deal with unpredictable weather common in the region. Yet the entire project was pushed forward with tight coordination, allowing it to be finished far faster than similar mountainous bridges in many other parts of the world. Together, these bridges show that for China, Building is not just about connecting point A to point B, it's about overcoming geography with speed, planning, and industrial capability. The result is infrastructure that dramatically shortens travel times and reshapes entire regions, often in just a few years. But this isn't coming from one single trick. It's the result of economic strategy, national planning, industrial power, technology, and even culture all working together. Imagine a huge machine with many gears, to understand the speed, we have to look at every gear. One of the biggest gears is China's centralized decision-making system. In many countries, major infrastructure projects get stuck in years of political debates, community consultations, environmental lawsuits, leadership changes, and endless paperwork. A project can take longer to approve than to build. In China, the process is far more streamlined. When the central or provincial government decides that a bridge, a new subway line, or an entire district needs to be built, the decision moves quickly and the execution starts almost immediately. They don't remove every step, but they eliminate many of the bottlenecks. Another huge difference is land ownership. Since the government owns or controls the land, they don't have to negotiate endlessly with hundreds of private landowners. They can reassign land for public use and compensate people directly without going through years of legal battles. That makes a massive difference in speed right from the beginning. Another major factor is the sheer size of China's construction companies. Many of the country's biggest builders, companies responsible for railways, highways, tunnels, skyscrapers, are state-owned. These organizations employ millions of workers and have layers of engineers, planners, and specialists who have worked on huge national projects for decades. Because they are connected to the government, they coordinate with each other seamlessly. A high-speed rail project might have one state-owned company designing the track, another one handling the stations, another one focusing on tunneling, and yet another manufacturing the trains, all following the same national plan, using similar internal standards and operating without long negotiations. That level of coordination dramatically shortens construction time because everyone is moving in the same direction from day one. China doesn't just build fast, it produces the materials needed to build fast. The country manufactures more steel than the rest of the world combined, along with enormous amounts of cement, glass, rebar, machinery, and basically every major component used in construction. This means when China wants to build a new district, a highway, or a major airport, they don't have to wait for imported materials, foreign suppliers, or slow supply chains. Everything, from the structural steel to the electrical systems, can come from domestic factories that already operate on huge scales. Lower cost, faster delivery, and nationwide supply chains all work together to support rapid building. 
A big part of China's speed comes from how much of the building process happens before workers even set foot on a construction site. Many buildings, especially housing blocks, hospitals, and hotels, are made using prefabrication. Instead of building walls, floors, or structural sections from scratch on site, China manufactures these components ahead of time in controlled factory environments. Entire sections of a building, from the basic structure to parts of the plumbing and electrical systems, are produced off-site with standardized measurements. When the pieces arrive at the construction site, they're simply lifted into place and connected, almost like giant building blocks. So when you see a time-lapse of a building going up in 48 hours, the truth is that most of the building happened weeks earlier in a factory. The site workers are mainly assembling and securing components, not creating them. This approach is faster, more consistent, and less wasteful, and China uses it on a scale few countries have ever attempted. China also has one of the largest construction labor forces in the world. Millions of workers, many with decades of experience, move from project to project, making the workforce highly skilled and extremely efficient. Construction sites often operate around the clock, with teams rotating through day and night shifts. Tasks are divided among specialized groups, each focusing on a specific part of the project, which creates an assembly line style workflow. When everyone knows exactly what to do and works in tightly scheduled phases, the pace increases dramatically. Another factor that rarely gets talked about is the level of standardization. In China, many types of buildings follow templates that have already been tested and approved. Subway stations across the city often share the same design. Apartment blocks are built using repeatable layouts. Hospitals use pre-approved frameworks. Even many of the bridges look similar because they follow models the engineers already trust. This means projects don't need to reinvent the design every time. Once the blueprint exists, it can be applied over and over again, cutting months or even years off the planning stage. With all this speed, it's also important to acknowledge the trade-offs. Some projects have suffered from quality issues, especially in earlier years or in rural areas where oversight wasn't as strong. Local governments have also taken on enormous amounts of debt to fund rapid development. And in some cases, regions have built more than they currently need, leading to so-called ghost cities. Fast building can accomplish incredible things, but it can also create challenges from environmental concerns to planning mistakes. It's not a perfect system, but it is a system designed to prioritize rapid development. People often wonder why their own countries don't build this fast. The answer is that China's model fits China's political system, its economic priorities, its population size, and its planning culture. Other countries have different legal frameworks, different levels of public participation, different land ownership systems, and different political dynamics. Slower approval processes may feel frustrating, but they exist because they balance many competing interests, such as environmental protection, private property rights, and public debate. China's speed isn't something that can just be copied and pasted elsewhere. So, how does China build so fast? It comes from a mix of long-term centralized planning, enormous state-owned companies, massive industrial capacity, heavy use of prefabrication, a huge labor force, and widespread design standardization. Together, these elements create a system that can reshape entire cities in just years, or sometimes even months. Whether you agree with the approach or not, there's no question that China has transformed its physical landscape faster than any country in modern history. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to like, subscribe, and let me know what topic you want covered next. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.